Okay, boys. Good morning. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the point slope form. Okay. I'm going to start this off first of all, though, by explaining to you that there are three forms of linear equations. The first one we already talked about. That's the slope-intercept form. That's y equals mx plus b. Today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the point-slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And then tomorrow, we're going to be talking about what's called standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. Now, as far as today goes, we have already learned how to work with the slope-intercept form. We know we have to solve for y. We know we have to put in the form of y equals m, x plus b. We know m is the slope. If it's positive, it's a rise over run. If it's negative, it's a fall over run. We know that the y-intercept is the y-value on the y-axis when x is 0. And we know that by far, the slope-intercept form is the best form to use when you're graphing a linear equation. If you're going to graph a linear equation, that's the way to go. Today, we will learn how to use the point-slope form, which is the best form to use when writing a linear equation. You're going to be writing linear equations today. They're either going to give you one point and a slope, or they're going to give you two points. And from that information, you're going to be able to write an equation. And that's what we're going to learn today. The point-slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where x1 and y1 is a given point. They are always going to give you one point at least. And that point will be the x1, y1. Of course, your m is the slope. Sometimes they give you the slope. Sometimes you have to calculate the slope. Since you will always be given either, like I just finished saying, you're either going to be given one, a slope and one point, it's very simple, or you're going to get two points. If I have two points, I can use my slope formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I can render or find a slope. And then I can use either of the, of the points that was given just use one of those points, and then I can find my equation. Always use the point-slope form of linear equations to write linear equations, OK? Now, let me put here first, I'm going to put point-slope first, OK? So a line passes through negative 5, 2, OK? Negative 5, 2, with a slope of 3, 5. Write the equation of the line in point-slope form. Step 1. Find the slope and label the given point x1, y1. What slope did I give? was I given? Okay, so my slope, my m, equals 3 fifths. Is everyone with me? What am I going to call my x1, y1? Negative 5, comma 2. They gave me what I needed. This is the example where they give you one point and a slope. Everyone see what I got so far? Now it's Mickey Mouse time, guys. Now in step 2, plug in, or in other words, evaluate, the slope and the x1, y1 into the point-slope form, and you're done, okay? So if I go y minus y1, what's y1 here? Okay, so y minus the value of y1, so y minus 2, equals m, what's my m? 3 fifths times x minus x1, so what would it be? Not negative 5, guys. It's minus a negative 5. So what would that be? Plus 5. You guys got to remember your integer rules, okay? You have to, please. Does that make sense, guys? You are done. That is your equation in point-slope form. Now, does this look like a nice, pretty way to graph it? 
Now, what did we just say was the best way to graph it? Slope-intercept form. So if you continue with the paragraph, the equation is now in point-slope form. Done. We got it in point-slope form. You're done with point-slope form. In order to convert the equation into slope-intercept form, though, simply solve for y so as to put it in y equals mx plus b. Once I have this, if I solve for y, then I can graph it easily. So how do I go about solving this correctly? No. Distributive property first. Thank you. y minus 2 equals 3 fifths x plus 3. How did I get that? Remember that there's an invisible 1 under that 5. And remember that when we're multiplying fractions, it's numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 1 is 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. How do I solve for y? I add 2 to both sides. y equals 3 fifths x plus 5. Now, that's in slope-intercept form. Now, I can graph this easily. Now, I can graph this. What's my y-intercept? 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What's my slope? Up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go backwards. Down 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you were done. So, I went from finding my slope and my y-intercept, and I found my point-slope form. Then I solved for y, and I found my slope-intercept form. And then I just graphed it. Does that make sense? Promise? Yeah. All right, let's do another one now. Write an equation in both point-slope form and slope-intercept form for the following. A line passes through negative 3, 6 and has a slope of negative 5. So what's my slope? Remember, you always find slope first. What's my slope? My m equals negative 5. Done. Okay, what's my x1, y1? Yeah, this is x1, this is y1. You with me? Okay, so now plug it in. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Why did it become a positive 3? Why did it become a positive 3? Because remember, it's x minus x1. You feel me? That's point slope form. That's done. Point slope form. You were done as far as that goes. You are done. And now I need it in slope-intercept form because I asked you for both. So what do I do here to put it in slope-intercept form? First, you distribute. Thank you very much. Y minus 6 equals negative 5X minus 15. And then how do I solve for Y? Add 6 to both sides. Very good. And Y will equal negative 5X minus 9. That is slope intercept form. Does everyone see what we're doing here, gentlemen? Does everyone see what we're doing here? Yes, now would be the time to ask. Thank you. What what part? The what? The point slope form? What don't you understand? What's the slope? Okay, they gave it to you, right? That's my slope, right? I'm not trying to be a joke. I just want to see where, where you're messed up. What's my x1, y1? Okay. I, I'm a little bit confused. I'm not trying to be a jerk, but y minus what's the value of y1? Equals m. What's my m? What's my slope? Times x minus x1. x plus 3. With all due respect, what don't you understand? No, no, I, I'm not mad at all. What, what don't you understand? Why don't you understand plugging in? 
Y1. You plug it into Y1. X1. You plug it into the X1. Slope. You plug into the slope. And then from here, you solve for Y. How can I help you? You sure? Thank you for your honesty, son. Okay, example three. <clears throat> now, this is the fun part. A line passes through 3, 2, and 5, 8. What is an equation of the line in both point slope and slope intercept form? Okay, what do we do this time? Thank you very much. You got to find your slope, my brothers. So, x1, y1, x2, y2. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is 6 over 2, which equals 3, and that is my m. Does everyone see how and why I found my M? Does everyone see it? Yeah. Promise. Okay. Step two. Well, we already have my X1, Y1, don't we? So, what's the point slope formula? Y minus Y1, which in this case is 2. Is everyone with me so far? equals, what's the next part of the formula? M, which is 3, times X minus X1, which in this case would be minus 3. Does everyone see that? That's it. You're done as far as point slope form goes. You are done. Questions on that? I'm here to answer your questions, guys. That is my job. Sir, thank you. Y minus Y1. What is Y1? Equals M times X minus X1. Thank you. Now, I got to put it into slope intercept form. So what do I do? Yes, sir. Y minus 2 equals 3x minus, minus 9. And then <coughs> add 2 to both sides. Always left to right. Y equals 3x minus 7. And now you could graph it. Does that make sense, boys? Yes, no, maybe, kind of, sort of. Talk to me, please. Okay. Talk to me, bro. Yes? Okay. Now. Now. Sometimes the following is going to happen. If I tell you guys what is the graph of this equation, wouldn't you be tempted, especially after this whole lesson, to turn it into slope-intercept form? Right? Because that's the best way to graph, correct? So let's do it. We got y minus 1 equals 2 thirds x minus 4 thirds. Add 1 to both sides. y equals 2 thirds x. This 1 becomes a 3 over 3. So that's minus 1 third. Ooh. What's the problem here with graphing this? It's almost impossible to graph 1 third, brothers. So in this particular case, whenever you have a y-intercept that is a fraction, are you really going to be able to use the slope-intercept form? No, this isn't really any good. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to reverse the slope-intercept form. Isn't this formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1? What is the y1 value here in this example? Why would you say negative 1 if it's y minus 1? Oh, 1. What is the x1 in this example? Positive 2. If this is a negative here, guys, the value of y1 is positive. If it's a positive, the value of y1 is a negative. So that's my point. 2 comma 1. What's the slope, guys? 2 over 3. Did everyone understand how I got that information? 
That means everyone. Did everyone understand how I got that information? Did everyone understand how I got that information? Okay, now, then it's easy. Check it out. What's the one of the points on this graph? So 2, 1, right? Didn't I say when we were talking about slope in the beginning of this chapter, Monday, that the slope is constant throughout the whole line? So if it's constant from this point, shouldn't I just be able to go up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3? And then can I go backwards down 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3? Guess what? Remember how the y-intercept was negative 1 third? Look at it. It's right there. But that's impossible for you guys to graph on your own. So you found the point, 2, 1. I'll do it again in black. And you followed your slope of 2 thirds. Up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3. Down 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3. And that's my line. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Thank you very much, brothers.